ranges. The North Pole is ice covered 365 days a year. Chilly waters surround this icy expanse. Bizarre jousts determine dominance. Further south, frosty air and frozen peaks provide updrafts for sharp taloned eagles. Elsewhere, the seasons change, temperatures drop, and ice grips the land. To survive in the cold, hunters must adapt. The polar ice cap is a stark setting for life and death struggles between predator and prey. This desolate Arctic landscape is spattered with blood. It's the scene of an attack. And somewhere out there, the assailant is still on the loose. The clues all point to one of the largest carnivores to walk the earth. The footprints are deep and clearly show huge claws. This must be a massive predator. The killer is a polar bear. This bear is built to cope with the grueling conditions of its harsh environment. It hunts on land and in the sea. Up to four inches or 10 centimeters of fat and a double-layered coat help it to withstand the Arctic winters. A polar bear generally walks at a leisurely pace to prevent overheating. It's perfectly adapted for the Arctic, where winter temperatures can plunge to minus 45 degrees Celsius or minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The fur is thick, up to two inches or five centimeters, and not white, but translucent and hollow like optic fibers. The hairs help transfer the sun's heat to the black skin. This, plus the layers of fat and a large body, keep the polar bear snug, even when the temperature's far below freezing. A polar bear is so well insulated that it's nearly invisible when photographed with heat-detecting infrared film. Only its face and breath register, while its body seems to blend into its cold background. Foot pads covered with soft bumps called papillae and furry paws help to stop the polar bear slipping on the ice. Protective membranes over their eyes serve as a sort of diving mask and may help against snow glare and ultraviolet light. Their sense of smell is about seven times better than a bloodhound's. They can locate seals through a meter over three feet of snow and ice. Polar bear ears are small, round and low profile. This helps the bear to keep a streamlined shape for swimming underwater. Razor-sharp claws are formidable weapons. The fur-lined and slightly webbed paws can carry up to a ton of camouflaged bear almost noiselessly across the ice. Polar bears are always on the lookout for a quick meal. Guillemots can dive, but polar bears can dive too. Because these bears spend so much time in the sea and on the ice, some scientists actually classify them as marine mammals. They're excellent swimmers, reaching speeds of up to six miles, almost 10 kilometers an hour. They're well adapted to the cold water. Their fat and hollow hairs insulate. Their nostrils close and the ears fold close to the head. 
They can dive up to four and a half meters or 15 feet below the surface and have been reported swimming up to 100 miles. That's 160 kilometers away from the nearest land or pack ice. It shakes the water off, otherwise it might freeze. Seal holes are like dinner invitations. When the seals use them, they leave traces of pungent body oil behind. A hunting bear picks up these scents and homes in. Ringed seals are common. They are the polar bear's main prey. Bears will stay near a seal breathing hole for long periods. But because each seal uses as many as 15 different holes, the polar bear may have to wait some time. The rules of the game seem stacked in the seal's favor. The waiting continues, but not for much longer. stalk ringed seals at their birth lairs. This time, it's caught a seal pup. A single bear can consume about 45 kilograms or 100 pounds of blubber in one sitting. To survive, polar bears need to eat about two kilograms, that's nearly four and a half pounds of fat a day. An adult ringed seal could provide just over a week's worth of energy. So this bear is going to have to hunt again soon. Killer cleans up. An important job because dirty, matted fur is a poor insulator. The polar bear is a formidable killer. Sharp claws, sensitive nose, and thick coat mean this ton of Arctic predator is truly built for the kill. Coming up next death in the air, in the water. And on the snow. Some of the harshest places in the world are home to really spectacular predators. In this hard environment, golden eagles hunt across snowy mountain ranges. They're well adapted to life among the cold, windswept peaks. Long, thick, waterproof feathers keep this magnificent bird of prey warm and dry. Their wingspan's around two meters, that's over six feet. Soaring on mountain thermals comes naturally. Golden eagles sometimes travel long distances searching for food. They hunt by flying back and forth along a slope or ridge. From high up, they can survey the slopes below, looking for any sign of life. The 
telltale silhouette in the sky frightens prey, flushing them into the open. As they break cover and bolt, the eagle gives chase. With seemingly little effort, the eagle gains ground on its fleeing victim. Eagles possess some of the best long-range vision on the planet. With its sights locked on, the eagle pursues the hare. The favea is the part of the retina where a high concentration of photosensitive cells are clustered. In eagles, all of the retina is more densely packed with these cells, and eagles actually have two favea per eye. Once it's in position overhead, the eagle plunges into its deadly dive. Feet are the eagle's main weapons. The talons can crush and kill prey instantly. Its distinctive beak is strong, sharp and deeply hooked for tearing flesh. Hunters are well suited to places like this, where they're challenged not just by the cold climate, but also by the rough terrain. Birds of prey, or raptors, have many superb adaptations. The beak, with sharp cutting edges, is highly effective at tearing flesh and crushing bone. It's partly made of keratin, the same material as nails, claws and hair in mammals. The eagle's bones are hollow, with braces inside for support. This makes the bird's skeleton both light and strong. They have several kinds of feathers. Stiff contour feathers cover their bodies, wings and tails, and fluffy down lies next to the skin for insulation. The legs are feathered all the way down to the toes. It's thought that this may help to protect them from injury when their prey struggles. Hearing is well developed in eagles, though not nearly as good as their eyesight, their primary hunting sense. Their broad wings are built for soaring. The six outer primary feathers are long, pointed and upturned to aid gliding. In flight, the wings are held straight out. The eagle steers by adjusting its tail. demanding environment, spotting prey is difficult. Eagle eyes are designed to deal with the challenge. They have a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. Not only does this clean the eye, it also helps to prevent damage from thrashing victims. Golden eagles use their tremendous eyesight to locate prey. Eagles are incredibly sharp-sighted. They're thought to see eight times better than we do.
these killers can dive onto their prey at over 150 miles. That's more than 240 kilometers per hour. Golden Eagle possesses a deadly combination of awesome weaponry. Lethal claws, scissor-like beak, phenomenal speed, and the sharpest sight on Earth combine to make this a real bird of prey. During winter in the Northern Hemisphere, snow can cover over 30% of the Earth's surface. This changes the rules of the game. The snowshoe hare is aptly named. Large, well-furred hind feet allow it to move easily over the snow. With bounds of up to 3 meters or 10 feet, hares can reach 27 miles, that's 43 kilometers an hour. Large ears help to regulate body temperature and enhance their acute hearing, useful for detecting enemies. They have a seasonal change in fur color, turning from brown in summer to almost pure white in midwinter. A remarkable adaptation. But the hare's best defense is to flee. Especially when it's being chased by a puma a fast, solitary hunter. The hare can change direction suddenly and make vertical leaps, which might cause the puma to misjudge the hare's position. This could save its life. but not this time. Big padded paws help the puma move efficiently through the snowy terrain. They have long hind limbs and are strong leapers. Like all cats, its eyesight and hearing back up predatory instincts. Usually three or four cubs are born late in winter and they stay with their mum for about a year and a half. The cubs begin to eat meat when they're just six weeks old. But puma cubs aren't born built for the kill. They have to learn. During their time with their mother, she hones them from playful kittens into trained killers. In order to feed her cubs, she must kill up to five times as often as when she was on her own. Fortunately, pumas are superb predators, with as many as 8 out of 10 hunts ending in a kill.
This time, though, Mother is careful not to actually kill the hare. She carries the live victim back to her cubs so that they can have a bit of a practice in bringing prey down. Teaching her cubs how to make the kill quick and clean is a long, slow process of trial and error. But by copying their mother, they will eventually learn the rules of survival in the snow. is another killer in the cold. Its thick coat is lighter colored in the winter to help it blend in. This dog is well adapted for hunting. Sharp sighted eyes can see over long distances. Sensitive noses seek out prey. Coyotes creep over the snow, then pause to listen for small animals squeaking or running below the thick blanket. It's heard something. four legs held stiffly together, it pounces. They can leap up to four meters over 12 feet. Powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth seize prey from under the snow. There's no obvious sign of prey in this frozen landscape and few opportunities for a meal. Winter is hard on hunters, so coyotes will eat almost anything. A coyote is always on the lookout for a meal. It's an opportunistic killer. It spots a trumpeter swan stranded on a frozen lake. The swan should have flown south before now. Perhaps it's sick or injured. Sharp senses and killer instincts make it a formidable predator, even in the midst of winter. It's not all wind and snow. Even the world's coldest places have a summer, a brief one. As spring arrives, the Arctic ice sheet begins to melt. By early summer, large cracks spread into the ice, opening up feeding grounds.
strange shapes glide through these chilly waters. Narwhals are easily recognized by their huge spiral tusks, once thought to be evidence of unicorns. Generally, only the males have tusks, and their jousting matches are thought to establish dominance. The tusk is a single massive tooth, which can measure up to half their body length. These whales are rarely seen, so very little is known about their behavior. The narwhal's feeding technique is mysterious, but they're thought to suck food into their mouths during dives to the ocean floor. There are still strange and wonderful killers on this planet that we know very little about. This white shadow is a beluga whale a creature of the high arctic. This is their first chance to reach feeding areas which have been icebound for months. A ridge of tough tissue on their backs protects them as they break through ice up to four inches or ten centimeters thick to make new breathing holes. Having no dorsal fin means they can swim easily under the icy ceiling. Their sonar system is perhaps the most accurate of any whale, a good adaptation for life in ice-cluttered Arctic seas. By changing the shape of the top of their heads, they fill the ocean with an incredible repertoire of sounds. Navigating for miles under broken ice, they bounce clicks off the ceiling above them and interpret the echo as a sound image of their frozen world. It's thought that the stream of echolocation clicks they send out helps the whales find their way through this complex icy maze. The belugas swim as far as possible under the ice. Sheltering under this great white mantle is one of the beluga's favorite foods, arctic cod, which gather here in large numbers. Belugas also make deep dives to feed on animals living on the seabed. These white whales are designed to withstand extreme pressure in an extreme environment. They are near-perfect cold-water predators. Around the ice, other strange forms flourish. There's a huge killer with an even bigger appetite for tiny creatures. These clouds are made up of small crustaceans called krill. There are billions of them, many smaller than a housefly. Incredibly, these extreme carnivores feed almost exclusively on these tiny crustaceans, about two tons of them every day. The bowhead whale's enormous mouths gape, scooping up vast quantities of krill. The whales force the water from their mouths through a baleen strainer, leaving the krill behind. When the whale surfaces to breathe, a V-shaped spout issues from twin blowholes at the peak of its massive head. These 
robust and powerful whales measure up to 18 meters, that's 59 feet, and can top 100 tons. This gaping mouth is the size of a garage door, fantastically adapted to feed on some of the smallest creatures in the sea. This huge hunter can consume almost two million victims in a day and can live for some 200 years. That could mean a diet of tens of billions of tiny crustaceans. It's quite a killer. Herring gather in the Arctic seas slowing their metabolisms down in preparation for winter. They swim together in shoals for protection, safety in numbers. But they're also hunted in numbers by a notorious killer. The orca, or killer whale, herds and attacks prey with cunning, intelligence, and coordinated teamwork. They're sometimes known as the wolves of the sea. Orcas find a shoal of herring, circle the fish, and corral them into a tight ball. The orcas use their white bellies to alarm the herring, driving them towards the surface. They blow bubbles to keep the fish tightly bunched. There's the orca, below the shoal. This hunting technique is called carouseling. Finally, they whack the balls of herring with their tails to stun their prey. Orcas pick off the shocked fish one at a time and can get through up to 300 fish per day. Orcas are actually the largest member of the dolphin family. They can weigh over five tons. They're a magnificent combination of power, grace and intelligence. their top marine killers. These whales have teeth, unlike the bowhead, a baleen whale. So they have a much more active killing style. These formidable hunters also go for big victims. Walrus have just three enemies, man, polar bears, and killer whales. In summer, these two adult male orcas hunt walrus off the Russian coast. The newborn are most at risk. These adult males try to keep the youngsters safe by carrying them on their backs. The whales isolate one group. The other walrus flee towards the shore. Adult walrus will use their tusks in self-defense. This isn't going to be easy. The killer whales try to panic their prey and force them to keep diving. As the walrus surface, the attackers try to knock them senseless with their tails. 
This is one way of avoiding injury from those dangerous tasks. The whale's remarkable coordination and teamwork means it's only a matter of time. The sea wolves strike again and the water runs red. Killer whales really do live up to their name. This Magellanic penguin may look cute, but its days are numbered. This southern giant petrel is patrolling the penguin's nesting beach. Juveniles scampering down the beach for their first swim are like sitting ducks for the larger petrels. The petrels try to herd the waddling penguins into the water. But the penguins aren't always keen to cooperate. The petrel will try again. This bully's plan of attack is to get the penguins into the sea, isolate one, and either drown it or peck it to death. surface next. It pounces and grabs the penguin in its strong beak. Now it holds its victim's head underwater until it drowns. kill can take a long time. The petrels also search the beach for penguin carcasses. There's plenty to squabble over. bullies. Sharp beaks and iron will make them savage killers. This Falkland Island beach is a safe haven for Gentoo penguins. They must get into the chilly water to feed, but they seem reluctant. There's danger lurking just off the shore. Dark shadows are on patrol. Penguins porpoise, leaping clear of the water to gain speed.
lurking shadows are actually sea lions. They hunt unwary penguins. Their acute vision in air and in water helps them spot their prey. Large teeth grab their victims. Powerful foreflippers propel them efficiently through the water. This is a serious marine predator. The penguins seem to sense imminent danger. The chase is on. Sea lions can porpoise too. Both predator and prey are agile and graceful swimmers. Most of the penguins make it back to safety on the beach. But it's curtains for any penguin caught offshore. Vicious teeth rip at the unlucky victim. The sea lion thrashes its prey about repeatedly. The sea lion's style of killing is particularly gruesome. Their teeth are built to grip, not chew. The thrashing continues. This seemingly excessive behavior could serve to peel off inedible skin and feathers. Sea lions may be brutal, but they obey the basic rule. Kill or die. Extreme cold in an extreme environment demands extreme adaptation. Large size and thick fur defeat cold. Wings and sharp eyes conquer difficult terrain. Opportunism and speed are vital tactics. To thrive in the cold, you must be built for the kill.